uh, it's it's quite interesting, and I like to show you a uh, few things that I found that they they change it uh, in time. So I think they they are going to be updated soon. Are you pushing? Okay. Uh, yes, but I need to add uh, other things, and uh, because I add the model, and the model is like a bit. Uh, even if I used um, R data, yeah, to save to to save the out uh, the output, but it's still uh, a bit too big. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think I'm going to to change it later. I, I have anyway. the same problem. Uh, yeah, and, you and you find... should find it on the on the repo. Huh? Uh, if you look at my my push, you should find it on the repo because yeah. it's there. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Jen need to like just validate it, probably. Ah, okay, okay. So I did. A, I uh, um I had uh, time to look at that because I've tried to compress the data. So I've compressed it uh, because the R data can be also be Fully compressed of like with, with the, yeah, I, I show you, I show you. So, um, okay, this chapter is talking about uh, uh, not normal hierarchical regression and classification. So, we are going to make um, uh, non uh, normal um hierarchical model okay so the objective here are to get familiar a bit with uh, basic modeling building blocks and um, expand generalized hierarchical regression model by combining hierarchical regression techniques with poisson and negative binomial regression models and also uh, there is a comparison with a logistic regression model uh, finally, we we'll learn a bit more about Climber success in Himalaya, and uh, the, 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 there is even other data set, but we, we won't spend much time on it, so I didn't mention. Okay, uh, so in particular, we will be looking at applied bias rules on Himalayan data. Uh, for the Himalayan climbing expeditions. And then there is even other uh, data set with the IMB, but you know, we just go through the model and that's it. Uh, here are the uh, libraries needed for, for running these things. And um, um, I've, uh, at the end of this, the chapter saved the, the, the image with all the, the output. And then, so at the beginning, you, you just need to load um, the data and you find all the output in your environment. So you don't need to spend time running things. So you already have everything. So data for this uh, for first part of the chapter are, are from the Himalayan database. And this, uh, this data, um, have been used for uh, Tidy Tuesday project. Um, and uh, here you can find the link. Uh, even in the book, there's a link. So this, this, uh, and then uh, they even uh, put it inside um, the package. All right, so this data set is made of 2,076 climbers which are climbing the Himalaya, okay, Himalaya. And these are dated back to 1978. But the point here is to have a look at the, um, uh, you know, the, the success, the success in uh, climbing with uh, based on, for example, we, we will have a look at the, the impact of the different age uh, class uh, the climbers have, and um, even if the oxygen that has been used uh, or required to use, or even if this sometimes if if they use oxygen or not, what changes? So we we'll have a look at this um, and apply a Bayesian model to see what's happened and how, how the, uh, it performs. 
on this data. Okay, so we have these climbers and we start selecting some uh, predictors that may be interesting. So there is an expedition ID, a member ID for the climbers, uh, a vector of uh, success. So that means um, this is a logical vector. So true or false, if there's a success or not in climbing the Himalaya. The year, the season, and the age, the expedition role, and then finally the use of oxygen. So false, no uh, use of oxygen through they used oxygen. So to mention is this nice function from janitor uh, tab tabel tabiel. And this basically saves you some time because it's already providing a table, a little table and, and the percent. So you just do that and you find uh, already. So as you see, the proportion of uh, failures in um, it's uh, like um, a little bit over, uh, 50%, so 61%, and uh, why the uh, success are the um, around 40%. 40 so it's a, they, they, they quite balance it uh, to be um, uh, as a vector of predictors. Uh, so if you uh, want to predict if they success or not, it's a, it's a, it's a balanced uh, uh, vector, okay? more or less balanced, so it's 60 to 40, okay. So we now uh, like to show something because we started with 2000, about 2000 rows, no? Okay, so now we uh, do a bit of uh, like um, counting the expeditions. And uh, we now are at 200 rows. And we have some frequencies of these expeditions, they, they vary. And uh, in general, so uh, more than 75 out um, of 200 expedition had 0% of success rate. In contrast, nearly 20 expedition had 100% success rate. So things change, basically. So if we, if we group it by expedition ID, uh, the, the, the balance change. In fact, if we uh, have a look at this uh, um, um, bar plot, uh, this histogram, we can see that uh, there's a um, uh, quite high number of zeros. And uh, the, so the other are all, all spread along the, the, uh, the, the, the success rate. Okay, but the count for 0% success, it's, it's quite important. Okay, so uh, let's, let's think, start building a model. So you, uh, Oliver, already uh, talked about um, some components of this, the model that we are going to use and how to, um, how he's made. So I won't go back entirely to, to all of that is already been said. But uh, mm, uh, so um, I, I, I will I'll give some 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 elements for for as 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 we already have have been through them. Okay, uh, but the, the 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 chapter suggests to go back to the previous two chapters for having a, a complete understanding for this chapter. So chapter 16 and 17 are a builder of this chapter. So here we use a Bernoulli model and because we have a response variable which is binary. So we have zero, which means yes, and ones, which means no. Uh, we are looking at expedition success, you already said, and we have uh, two uh, 
we are um, focusing on two predictors, the age and the climbers receiving oxygen. Okay, so here there is a like these indexes are for because there's many, uh, as, you, as you see, there's 200 expeditions ID and they repeat themselves. So we have uh, uh, a climber, which is J, and an expedition, oopsie, a climber, which is I, and an expedition, which is J. Okay. So and um, so the one and two is for indicating that we have two predictors. So the first predictor without mm, making confusion. Okay, our Bayesian model is uh, um, our response variable, so success or not, and it depends by uh, a likelihood. Okay, so the likelihood of success. It is a uh, Bernoulli with uh, P the, uh, as a uh, parameter. Okay, as I mentioned, if you go back to chapter 17, you find explanation about complete pooling and complete pooling expands this simple model um, into a logistic regression model. So we basically, um, now set our coefficients. So our response variable depends on beta zero, beta one and beta two, which are our coefficients that we are going to um, predict. Um, and uh, they are, uh, the um, events are independent of each other. So the success of one, doesn't, doesn't uh, get into the success or unsuccess of the other one. So they are completely independent. So this is another reason why to use a Bernoulli, okay? Because it's a binary and it's, uh, they are independent. So beta zero is our uh, intercept. Uh, it's the typical baseline success rate across all expeditions. Beta one is the global, relationship within success and age when controlling for oxygen use. And beta two is the global relationship between success and oxygen when controlling for age. Okay. Yeah. So we have success and age and success and oxygen. Okay. As I uh, we know that uh, we do uh, uh, log odds for our model because it performs better. Uh, it actually makes the things easier because it's like it's like a sort of rescaling of the values. So we have an homogeneous environment where we project our uh, predictions. So we do the odds doing the uh, our likelihood divided by one minus likelihood. Okay, and this is the log odds. What is that? that, that that's a simple like that because uh, the odds is, uh, uh, is the probability. Okay, so the probability divided by one minus P, P divided by one minus P. So the log odds, it's our model. Okay, so now, as, a, as a, just to be to clarify, because we already make a confusion, uh, we use a Bernoulli, which has this probability, this likelihood that we we build. It's the parameter of of our uh, distribution, okay, of our model distribution that we are we are using. So that's why we are going to estimate this probability with a a transformation, which is the log, and we use, this is even a transformation. So we, we use the log odds for our Bernoulli distrib probability distribution, okay? Uh, so this is our model as usual, okay? So just mind that now our, uh, the result of our model will be a logarithm. So 
if we want to go back and have the values we started with, we need to uh, revert uh, the value with uh, applying an exponentiation to the logarithm in, in a way that we go back to our data and we have we, we can understand the outcome. Okay, so we need to take account for the grouping of our uh, of our data. Uh, and this is another uh, very important point to uh, that, that we see. Because in fact, if we um, group our data by age and oxygen used, and then we summarize the success um, calculating the mean, okay? So we, we, cal we set uh, a success rate uh, vector, we see that uh, the, uh, they group uh, within using uh, this, this yellow uh, top uh, band here is the use of oxygen true and the bottom is use of oxygen false. So this is the success rate. So as a sex, success rate is low when um, the oxy oxygen use is false, uh, uh, opposite, uh, if uh, they use oxygen, then the rate of su success is even reaching 100%. So there is some variation within the age. So this, there is a discussion in the, in the chapter about that. In fact, he says that uh, um, uh, I've listed uh, this a bit forward. So we, we will talk about that. Uh, but um, so age counts, basically, if they're younger, if they use oxygen or not, compare if they have um, older age, if they use oxygen or not. So all those things are uh, qualifying to um, adding uh, information uh, for our model. So Oliver explained uh, about uh, this, uh, this bit here. So the B that we add to our intercept, this, this bit here, and said, uh, so this, you need to go back to chapter 17 and uh, 16 and 17, and you have a more um, um, larger explanation of uh, how, how it is. But basically, uh, we are going to it uh, like this. We say that, uh, we have an intercept beta zero. Now, what we uh, the best things to do is to select an intercept with this is uh, uh, centered. Okay, so a balanced uh, intercept within all the, um, uh, the 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 value because we have uh, seen that. Uh, there is a main trend. So um, it's important to uh, consider an intercept with this, uh, th that is centered, okay? And we hypothesize that uh, it's normal distributed uh, with uh, mean uh, M0 and standard deviation S0. Okay, this is uh, the variance of the standard deviation if you square it, okay? So these are the values provided in the chapter. So you, you can uh, uh, even calculate yourself. They slightly change um, somehow, but okay. So now what's happened is that uh, um, our, um, if, if we don't choose one intercept, we have a certain number of intercepts, okay? And they all depend by beta zero. Okay, so if, if you imagine that, because it's a quite a huge data set, okay? So, um, so each intercept that uh, it's for age and su success, uh, oxygen or not, it, it 
each intercept belongs to the, the, the main one, okay? Because that, there's a main thread. And uh, the, um, it depends by some variations as, as well. There is some variation. So we, um, uh, I, uh, as well, say that these are all independent, are all independent to each other, and they are normal distributed with mean beta zero and some of and variance as zero. So the variation is an exponential uh, with parameter one. So the, the variation gets growing, 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 okay, as an exponential. So now uh, we need to reframe our uh, log odds in a way that um, our intercept consider takes consideration of the variation. So our new intercept is beta zero plus p for each uh, climbers. And then uh, the rest of the, the model is the same, just as the same. So our b, it depends by the variation, so sigma, and all Bs are again independent, normal distributed with mean zero and variance sigmas. So what sigma captures, uh, what sigma does is that it captures the between group variability in success rate from expedition to expedition. I don't know if that's clear what happens. If I draw the things, so we have some expeditions to Himalaya, okay? Each expedition has an ID, and in each expedition, we have a certain number of climbers, okay? So you imagine that this other set spread out if we don't group it by expedition ID, because we have each climbers in the data set. If we group it by, uh, by expedition, they shorted because each expedition contains a certain number of climbers. In each expedition, let, let's, let's filter one expedition. Imagine that we have just one expedition ID. We have a certain number of climbers and those are of a certain age and they use oxy oxygen or not and they have success or not in, in this expedition. Okay, so what we want to do is build a model formula uh, to high hierarchical grouping st um, structure, okay? Because it, it's an hierarchical structure. And so we want to predict success based on age, oxygen use, and then we add some random mice behavior on expedition ID. Or age and oxygen are randomized within expeditions. Okay, so now we use uh, our uh, uh, stun. Uh, how do we pronounce it? Glimmer, glimmer. I don't hear. Uh, I I would just say G L M E R. I would, I would oh, try to say as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would probably fail to. So, <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, this uh, we use stand as the model. There's something in the chat. Glimmer sound good. Okay. Um, so, and uh, our formula uh, on data, and we use the family binomial, and then the uh, prior intercept set as a normal. We 2.5 was here. Binomial, and you will you will know that it's Bernoulli because it's just like yeah okay. So binomial yeah, yeah. Uh, group like the binomial and the Bernoulli because yeah, I mean they are not the same but they are very close. Okay. Got okay. It. Then we have the so the prior intercept, the prior and the prior covariance. Uh, this is uh, like you you need to I, I can I can go through to to this. Uh, so you, you, you need to have a look at that. So uh, then we chained, 
four times and uh, we do some iterations and we set the seed because it's uh, randomized. Maybe not, not only because it's randomized because, uh, but anyway, you need to set the seed. Uh, it's, 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 very important. it's both, it's for the randomized effect, but maybe also for the MCMC. For both, you need to set the uh -huh. seed, I think. Maybe, uh, I could be wrong, but. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we see that the, the, the summary says that uh, um, uh, th there are some, some uh, priors and adjustments. Uh, there is a covariance. So here there is not, uh, mm, if, if I do this prior summary, the information I want, to be honest. So yeah, I have some information because mm, somehow, but uh, I, I need to do more diagnostics and I use the Monte Carlo, this, this function here, MC, MC trace, MC, MC dense overlay and um, ACF, radio, and the, the, these things here on the model will give you some more information. And uh, to, to make it short, because it takes a long time to run these things, to make it short, the, the, uh, the book says that, so the author said that, uh, uh, so we are on the right track using binomial based uh, on uh, uh, replications. So the number of replications shows that uh, uh, because the, the output of these things, it's a huge matrix with uh, uh, visualizations for, for each thing. So it's something like that. And, um, but in general, uh, the author says that uh, we, we are in the right track. So let, let's let's do these things. I'm I'm going I'm going like um, to take um, some time to spend on this one because I uh, I think this is the most important. One. But anyway, then then the, the, we have a Poisson after the Bernoulli, and it's basically the same things, but you apply a Poisson. So I'm going to spend a bit more time on this one here. So. Um, let, let's have a look at uh, what's happening if we uh, define uh, this success rate with a function. So we define the mean equal to zero and uh, we do the, the check, no? the, the prediction posterior check. The, do you remember I did that chapter. Um, the, the, this, this function is very good for as, as a summary of the result and is if you want it releases a plot automatically so it's very it, it's very yeah. good to use and uh, if you if you want to you can make uh, 100 replications and plot uh, the statistics of uh, success rate this way this is nice very you know it releases what what you want yeah Basically, you, you see that uh, the, this uh, blue line uh, says that the uh, uh, on average, the success rate is uh, the average of the all, uh, all our um, replications. So we are, we are doing fine. So in fact, this uh, says that it displays the proportion of climbers that were successful in each under posterior uh, simulated data set. So, and, and not the other ones. Okay, so now, um, maybe you can uh, like, uh, uh, there's something in the chat. Yeah. Just okay. the pronunciation of um, Glimmer or Glimmer, no, no worries. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay if we if if we do if we use the the tidy function on our client on our model and we can set the effect on fixed uh, require the confident intervals and set the confident interval level the, this is the output so uh, this is slightly different of what uh, uh, is in the book so it is slightly different. In fact, I didn't put the number here inside, uh, but um, I just said that um, you can use this um, the, 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 
So the low level of the confidence interval and the higher level of the confidence. Basically, this is what's happened when you want to go back, you know that, when you want to go back to, uh, to your values but to, to see what, what, because this is the, the log. Uh, we don't use the intercept, no? We use, for example, uh, this um, negative no point, no uh, five, nine, and this negative no point, no, three, five, uh, as a, a lower and upper bound for the confidence intervals, we need to exponentiate them to have the, the value back, uh, our original values. And here we have, uh, we have now, what's happening when you make a model, if, if that you hypothesize some function giving some uh, parameters, and then it releases the um, um, some prediction. So the it's, it's, it's some expected values. So then you can go back. Okay, now that you have your coefficients, this beta made by the model, you can calculate your likelihood. Okay, so. I, uh, this is what my model uh, uh, releases. I use this value to calculate my P value. So the results are both with oxygen and without oxygen and the probability of success decreases with age. This is what uh, it says. Uh, we can see that the estimates for age uh, decreases and uh, while increases when oxygen is used. So what this means mm. is that the, yeah. Uh, even in yeah. log scale, uh, it's still a small decrease. It, it have effect, but small effect, I will say, no? Could I say yeah. that? I, 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 obviously I cannot calculate log into my head, but I mean, exponentially into my head, but like, yeah, it seems small effect. Like it's smaller at least than oxygen. Yeah, and, the, and even uh, age is very important. So these things changes uh, at different age class. So if you then uh, like change the model and make classes to so adjust the model for, for age class, things might change. Okay, so now I've stopped a bit some time here because this function doesn't work. Apparently it's deprecated. So oh. if you, yeah, uh, so if we go back to my R, uh, we see, uh, okay, okay, I've done some, some uh, things because, um, where is it? Okay, so we were here, this is the tiny, this is the things. Okay, this is what uh, is nice. So it should be, okay, I think it's that. So if we, uh, I, I'll put this, this in the chat because I found it very useful. Uh, this well. is nothing else that, uh, you know, uh, Teddy Bises. But uh, this vignette, it's for our, our standard models. So the models that we are using. And uh, it uh, provides some, some examples. So you have a model and then you can use some functions to dig inside the model, like for example, seeing the variables um, and spread draws. Okay. What means is creating a grid. So you basically complete all the values with other values that you don't have. So it takes consideration of all possible outcomes that can happen. So you expand your data. Uh, in this case, you expand your beta terms in the, within the model. Okay, so it, it's very interesting. So, um, and if you go forward, you find more interesting things for more, even, even visualizations which are very nice. Okay, 
So here, what I done, seeing that I couldn't use that function because the function uh, is deprecated, I started looking at the variables. So this is our data set. Can you imagine? Look at that. So like a certain number of values, okay? Yeah, two hundred so, basically, no? The number, of, yeah. the number of expedition. Yeah. Uh, plus, plus the global parameters. Exactly. Okay. So if I do spread draws on intercept and B, the B is the, so basically what it does is adding noise on noise. Because this, yeah. No? <laughs> I, I don't remember. Okay. Uh, the B group will be like the B0G of every, it will be B0G. So it will be like the, when you want to get to have beta zero centered or beta zero non centered, it's equal the beta zero. So that's like the beta zero is a inter, no, it's intercept. Yes, it's intercept and plus B zero G, which is like the, the difference between like the global intercept and the group intercept, I think. So okay. B, B group is that, I think. I'm not sure about that. But well, then, anyway, so yeah. to, to give you an idea, I selected three expeditions okay. and yeah. applied the, the, the function to see oh, cool. the, what's happened. Okay, so you need to uh, filter because the two, 200 are too many. Uh, so you can see uh, randomized three expeditions, how they change it to each other. So they are independent. So they, they, they don't get into the meaning to each other. Uh, okay. So uh, here you can have a, another quick look, but I, I, I go forward uh, because that's, that's uh, but anyway, I, I was playing with these things again. Uh, basically, um, what uh, you need to use, it's add, I'll show you the function. Well, thanks for doing all this uh, job, uh, Federica. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, 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 let, because, you know, um, okay, add line thread draws. Okay. This is what you need to add, okay, instead of, um, oops. Then if you, I don't know if I went down. There. I will write it in my book. <laughs> so we have a, a, like a few minutes, a few second pause to, um, just to, to run these things. I, I knew that I, I couldn't have the time to, to do uh, everything because oh, yeah. this part is very important. Then the, the, the second data set on RMB uh, uses uh, um, a Poisson model and uh, the, the, the author mentions, uh, uh, obviously, uh, all the comparison and why they use the, the, the Poisson model and they show uh, to like when you use uh, two different families, what's happened basically. So, but uh, I think it's, it's good to spend the time on one um, to, to understand what's happened here. And then, so the other one will, will follow uh, easier somehow. Okay, so, you just have just checking the summary just the change would be like uh, the link function will not be a log out when you use like a binomial or po a poison but just exactly log, which exactly makes sense okay, okay. cool okay ah uh, uh, okay now because this this is not this is not what he wants. So basically, if I do this, the result here is, as you see, I have this link thread. So I need to, because I've tried a few of them. So if I do this, 
I, uh, um, I haven't been able to replicate the plot in the chapter because this one is different. As you can see, uh, in the chapter, where is it? Okay, this is what, what's in the chapter. As you can see, uh, basically, uh, um, can I see your equation? My my equation is yes. uh, I've changed it with uh, because, yeah, it add lin seems... red. Yeah. Oh no, you have the same still look like because like it doesn't. Uh, I think the probability of success with edge show like um, mm. you know. Uh, the probability of success is is going down uh with yeah uh with edge it's increasing like older you are the probability uh, i mean the the it should like uh, i don't know <laughs> uh, like see it should uh, drop more so i don't i don't see why you don't get that the same result uh, i don't i haven't had much time so uh, uh no basically yeah, basically here are under posterior plausible models for the probability of climbing success by age and oxygen use. Uh, I, th I think the is it the y axis is is, is different on there because that goes from zero to one. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe like it's yeah. a log. Uh... Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. In fact, but anyway. Good spot um where is it where i was okay it's probability on the so it's p exactly um so what we do now is to uh have a look at the uh what's happened uh with new expeditions so we have a new data and uh, we use uh, uh, predict uh, um, the posterior predict function because we can use that just the predict function. We need to use posterior predict function on a uh, arsenal model and we knew on new data and to see the result. And even we can calculate the call means and evaluate what are the, with the confusion matrix, um, the false and true if they, so as you can see, there's some uh, mismatching. And then the sensitivity is nice and the accuracy is even nicer. So, Okay. This is, uh, okay. So we, we have done with the climbing the Himalaya uh, and now we jump on IBNB, uh, making Poisson a negative binomial regression. Uh, here, uh, there's a, what this uh, data, um, uh, uh, provide is the um, like the number of uh, where is it? I don't have uh, uh, a speck of the the data. Okay, so basically, uh. Uh, let's let's go back here because um, I think it's nice even to see we have a few minutes left, but uh, we can have a, uh, even have a look at this uh, data. So these are the data. Okay, so uh, so we have a price rating reviews. Ah, okay. So basically, they stop on uh, thinking about private rooms or entire home uh, and then uh, uh, like minimum stay and so that that's quite a certain number of, of information so 
even here we have a look at the number of rows. So we have a, like a thousand five hundred number of rows, and then if if we group it for neighborhoods to see, uh, we have forty three because uh, uh, the uh, 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 neighborhood is this one here. So they they want to have a look at the neighborhood and uh, see if there's a um they prefer like private room or entire home and those things we have some plots so the first one says that uh, the number of reviews uh, um, have a, a certain trend which they they oh they don't have many and uh, the ratings uh it's higher um but uh if if you think about the reviews um so the the the, the majority is very low and then uh finally the room type entire home private room and shared room so they, they, as you can see, the distribution of things um, of these three types are uh, similar, but quite uh, at the same time, you know, the shared room is, is slightly different, uh, like. And then uh, what they look at is that um, what's happened um, within the rating and the room type and they uh, select just because they, they were quite uh, similar, like in entire home and private room. So they look at these two types and see the ratings in some uh, neighborhood, Albany, East Garfield, and the Loop. And see the ratings, how the rating changes. So, and then they make the model. So this is the model. Uh, we have this formula. Uh, so we look at the number of reviews, the ratings, the room type, and then randomizing the neighborhood because they don't get into the meaning to each other. So they are independent. That's in Chicago. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so this is the model. Um, there are some uh, as well um, variation and everything. So this is the output of the model because I save it. We can see. Uh, so it's a Poisson with this formula. We have some uh, values for ratings, which are all positive and the room type private compared to home, uh, entire home, it's still positive and then shared compared to the other two is negative or something, yeah? So uh, we have a certain standard deviation and now, now here, here the discussion uh, starts from here basically. On the type of model, on the type of model. Basically, if we um, do our summary with the PP check, um, we, we, we see that there is some like uh, disparity. So the, the model doesn't catch properly all the replications. So basically, the author suggests to, to, to slightly make, make a, a, a little change. Okay. Now we use a negative binomial. Here we used a, a Poisson. And um, as you can see, it fits better. I don't, I don't hear you. Yeah, no, it, it's a common, I, to work a lot with this kind of data, it's, it's frequent like, the Poisson is just like a first step and it rarely fits because like you have a lot of zero or uh, 
I think you have, in this case, that you mean like you have lots of Airbnb that have few level of review or just one or two review. So you have a huge numbers of, um, <clears throat> of zero. And with Poisson, what you want is like a huge number of one. <laughs> one then, then go down. So it doesn't work. So yeah, negative binomial is, is the way to go. Yeah. When you, when you will have a lot of uh, zero. Exactly. By zero, so, no yeah. value. Yeah. So, uh, so basically more or less the same, but uh, if we then have a look at the uh, neighbor, we can uh, see that there is some uh, difference. So uh, there is a decreasing when Albany Park is the neighborhood and an increasing in uh, reviews in the other two. So finally, have a look at the posterior prediction. We, we make the prediction. Uh, on our second model, the one on a negative binomial. And uh, here there's a, he didn't put on, uh, on a side and then put inside, he put inside the, the function. So these are the new data. And then, uh, uh, so this is uh, the, basically the prediction and then the plot that shows the, the result of the prediction. We can even, oh, not found. Okay, so this is the prediction. So this, oh, oh. Uh, So here we can see the, the three um, neighborhood location and the distribution of the number of reviews. Yeah. It's still not perfect. I mean, it, it, encompassed the, it encompassed the range of it, but it's still like, I assume like the blue is like the medium, I would say. Yeah. And uh, the, the lighter blue is the com confidence interval, the interval. So sometimes yeah. like even in the loop, it's nearly get the mod, it do not necessarily get the, the mod of it, but yeah. I mean, it's better than the Poisson one. It's, it's still a uh -huh. range. Yeah. Okay, so, and uh, here is the mean absolute error and the scaled value within this range. So the range is quite, is quite big. I don't know. But anyway, th this is the, uh, the, the conclusion of this chapter. Let, let's go back to the, to the chapter and see. Um, they, they show some, some uh, like the formulation as before, uh, they choose a uh, centered uh, intercept. And uh, again, so this comparison between a Poisson and a negative binomial. I think, I, I think this um, mm, isn't too wrong. <laughs> yeah, this is the good conclusion. <laughs> It's not too wrong, but it's not too good. But I do not, I think it's very difficult to do prediction where you have uh, like, you know, this huge number of value where you basically have no value. Like, you know, this is a, this is like, you know, like people are going to rent Airbnb and they don't, do not provide review. So you have a lot of uh, non-providing data. I think it's always hard to do when, because you cannot explain the absence of data. Yeah. So I don't know. It's. Anyway, it was good for like, I, I think like also like what's more important is like you can basically with the logit function or a link function transform like categories to put it back into a linear model and use the linear uh -huh. model uh, to plug it uh, on 
a diverse set of, uh, I mean, to plug it to the wall uh, sets. Say hi, Echo. Yeah. <laughs> OK. So oh, uh, well, thanks. It was good. Uh, and thanks also Thank like you. for, um, you know, like investigating uh, the issue with like, um, I don't remember which one it is, but uh, uh, and and for linking like to the to the vignette, I will yeah. read it. Uh, next week is our last week. So I think it's I think it's me, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what? I I, th I think I'm doing it next week. So uh, oh. yes. Well, I, it's, it's we'll, have, we'll have to have a we'll have to have a celebration party because we've we've, we've yeah. got this. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. we should do that. Um, uh, Eric wanted like maybe to uh, like he, he bring into the chat that we that maybe we could fol uh, follow with another book. Uh, I will probably do not have time directly, but this is definitely something that I will enjoy it. So uh, I'm open it for it for it to be like a Bayesian book or more frequentist book. I I don't know. Uh, I have to check what's happened in the Air for Data Science communities. Like are they doing? I think most of the Currently, we are mostly working on, let's say, classic air stuff, like not too much stats. So maybe at one point, like uh, if we do a bit more stats, we, could, we, could, we, can, we can do something. But I don't know. OK. Thank you. Smashing. Well, see you next week. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye.